everybody. Happy Monday. Welcome back to a new <clears throat> reading vlog for the week. Um, I just finished the last one. I wrapped it up on the Monday and um, hopefully that'll be done today. I don't know. Um, you might not see it till like Wednesday. Today's a new week. Feeling a little bit on the back foot this morning. Didn't exercise, which was annoying, but I think I might try and do something when I get home from work. Um, the house is like kind of in a bit of a disarray, but we're just ignoring that. Um, <clears throat> what else? It's the start of Chinese week this week, so. Um, Jessica from Jessica's Books Deck on Instagram has created this amazing challenge where uh, she invites everyone to read tiny books for the week. Tiny is whatever that means to you. I like to think of tiny as anything under 100 pages. Um, it's a nice round number for me. It's manageable. Um, yeah, and see how many books you can read in the week. And... I am going to aim for seven books. That's like roughly one a day. If I don't read a book in a day, that's okay because I've got the weekend to kind of catch up if I need to. Um, so yeah, I'm going to vlog this entire week and fingers crossed we have seven books read by the end of the week. I'm starting with Assembly by Natasha Brown. I wanted to start off with a bang. I know that this one people have loved and yeah I am just super keen to get into it so this is the timing that I'm starting off with this week hopefully get a bit of reading done today on my walk to work and then lunchtime and then on my way home I've got quite a lot of stuff to do tonight I've got to edit a vlog I've got to do some exercise I've got to cook dinner I've got to clean the house so I'm glad that it's Tiny's week and I hope that I can finish this book today. Uh, that's my introduction to the reading vlog. Hoping to shake off this weird funk that I feel like I'm potentially sinking into. Uh, yeah, I wish I had have gotten up to do exercise this morning because I know that would have helped. We'll see how this goes. Okay. Bye. Kilda, Kilda. It's been a day. Um, sat at my desk about to edit last week's vlog. Uh, I got some book mail at work today from some publishers. First one that I got was Cultish by Amanda Montel. Uh, this was sent to me by Harper Collins NZ. Um, yeah, super stoked to get a copy of this. It is a piece of non-fiction that I was interested in reading. I have her first non-fiction work, uh, Word Slut, on my Kindle. I don't realise how short it was, so thinking I might try and read that this November. Thank you, Harper Collins, for sending me that. Um, and then the other one that I got was from Bloom, is from Alan and Unwin, but it's a Bloomsbury, uh, being put out by Bloomsbury, and that is Today a Woman Went Mad in the by Hilma Wallitzer. Um, it's a collection of short stories. She is a writer who was first published, um, well, she was quite prolific around the 60s and 70s and this is kind of like a, pop, uh, a reissue of some of her stories that were published around that time as well as new ones to kind of reintroduce her to younger readers. Um, it just sounded really interesting. The blurb says, In this collection, Hilma Waltzer invites us inside the private world of domestic bliss, seen mostly through the lens of Pauline and Howard's glorious Pauli and Howard's glorious, uh, gloriously ordinary marriage. From hasty weddings to meddlesome neighbours, ex-wives who just won't leave to sleepless nights spent wondering about unanswered chain mail. Walter captures the tensions, 
contradictions and unexpected detours of daily life with wit, candor, and an acutely observant eye. Including stories first published in magazines in the 1960s and 70s, alongside new work writing from Holzer, now in her 90s. Wow. Today a woman went mad in the supermarket, reintroduces a beloved writer to, the embrace, to be embraced by a new generation of readers. So yeah, I thought that sounded really good. You know, I'm down for a short story. Thank you to Ellen and Unwin for sending this to me. Still reading this. I uh, didn't read as much as I would have liked to today. Don't think I'll finish it today, to be honest. Um, not really starting off on a good foot. I have a video to edit. Once I've finished that, I think I know I'll have more time. I will try and read quite a bit of it tonight. Um, although it is Monday, so Succession uh, comes out and so does the newest episode of Insecure. I mean, I know there's a lot of people that love Succession, but Insecure is where it's at. That show is fucking hilarious. And the episodes are only 20 minutes long, which is both a good thing and a bad thing because it never feels like enough, but they're just like good little bite sizes. I can sit there and like fold the washing while I watch it. It is such a hilarious show. Issa Rae, she is so clever and so funny. Um, but yeah, I haven't really read enough to kind of give an opinion. It's the writing's really nice. Um, yeah, there's been some passages. I haven't underlined anything, but there have been some passages I've folded pages over that I want to underline. Yeah, it feels very clever. It feels very... There are ideas that I think probably have been explored in writing before, but maybe not this well. That's what, I, that's what I'll say so far. Okay, I'm gonna try and edit as much of this video in the next 20 minutes before I have to go cook dinner. I just recorded some stuff and then my camera died and of course it didn't record any of it to the SD card, so let me start again. Uh, hello, it's Tuesday. We got home from work. Um, I'm cooking dinner tonight, which I feel like I haven't done in about 5,000 years. Um, I really do feel bad about not cooking dinner enough because Rupert gets left with that chore a lot and tonight I've decided I'm cooking dinner. I wanted to talk a little bit about assembly. I finished this this morning before I got up to get ready for work and yeah I just wanted to talk about it a little bit. I realized I didn't speak about it yesterday what it's about. Typical me. Um, so it is narrated by a black British woman who works in the finance sector. Um, she is narrating her life as she travels to her boyfriend's family home in the country. They are going there to celebrate uh, his parents' big anniversary. They're both from very different backgrounds and class backgrounds. Um, she is, I guess, middle class, but she talks about how finance is really the only sector that she was ever going to be able to uh, make any upward movement in terms of moving up in a class structure and gaining wealth and being given opportunities to further her career and stuff like that. His family, they obviously own some kind of estate. Um, he's set to inherit it. That is his life. He doesn't do anything, I don't think. Uh, yeah, very, very short, quick, fast-paced novel. You spend a lot of it just in her thoughts and in her mind. And um, that's really all that happens. Lots of ideas are explored specifically in terms of class and race 
um, and what that means for her trying to go into this world that is so vastly different and she she knows that she isn't she doesn't necessarily belong there this is very kind of poetic prose in certain parts the writing is very good i was keeping that in mind as i was reading it that i wanted to pay special attention to the language and to the writing it was very good i i didn't feel like it was too dense or too hard to follow but it was kind of just the right amount of poetic prosiness to really make some of the lines just like punch um i did a lot of uh dog airing if you can see that um yeah uh and then i started this is pleasure by mary gates girl uh it is about it's told in chapters from two different characters, so one named Quinn and one Margot, and they've been friends for a long time. Quinn is being accused of uh, sexual misconduct, sexual abuse maybe, no not sexual abuse, but um, he's had a whole, a whole bunch of people kind of um, come forward and accuse him of, I guess, yeah, sexual inappropriateness from what I can tell so far. And uh, he has left his job. And it's kind of the telling of the story of what how it happened and the friendship between these two. It's still early days, but um, I think it's yeah it's too hard to tell with some of these tinies you can't give an opinion like straight away i think i'm, I'm enjoying it i am enjoying it i think it's going to be good the writing is fine we're doing the tinies we're getting through them go and watch renee's channel if you guys don't already um she lives in i'm gonna butcher the maori name for new zealand but i'll see her she lives in uh New Zealand and reads a lot of New Zealand writers but also a lot of like excuse the washing machine contemporary literary fiction um she's just brilliant I love her vlogs so much they're like 40 minutes sink into the sofa with a cup of tea she loves tea um I and really get down and yeah just wanted to shout out her channel because I've been binging it I've watched some of her vlogs twice that's how I know it's good and um I'm gonna send you guys over there to subscribe What a way to wake up on a Wednesday. Having my breakfast, drinking my cup of tea, and catching up on Hannah's vlogs. And she mentions moi. It was so nice. Um, thank you so much, Hannah, for watching and then even mentioning me in one of your vlogs. It's really nice. Okay, I am still reading this. I'm about 80, uh, not 80, 25, 24 pages from finishing. And it looks like it's gonna bucket down outside. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to walk to work. Oh uh, yeah, still reading this. Um, I will say that the character Quinn is completely unreliable as um, a narrator to his situation and what is going on. He seems to be kind of downplaying a lot of the interactions that he's had with these women who are accusing him of sexual harassment or sexual inappropriateness. It's quite... It's getting more and more uncomfortable to know that this woman, Margot, who's his friend, is almost um, making excuses for him or trying to explain the situation to other people you know that's just the way he is uh, but he's harmless like it doesn't mean that he this is what he meant by it that kind of stuff uh, it's yeah it's, it's quite uncomfortable and frustrating to read um, 
this idea that he believes that the interactions that he's having with these women aren't um, inappropriate because it's about building intimate and close connection and I think he thinks he's offering a, a solace for these women, someone that they can confide in, they can be intimate in this way and he doesn't see how inappropriate these situations are. There's a lot going on in here and I'm really enjoying it I think. It feels nuanced but it also feels very almost like a caricature yeah but I'm enjoying it I will take it to work today and finish it and then also I need to pick out my next tiny um, so so far we've read two we've got a few to choose from so I've got Ariel by Sylvia Plath 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 uh, Bluettes by Maggie Nelson, The Hour of the Star by Clarice Lispector, The Cook by Maylie the Caring Girl, and The Dry Heart by Natalia Ginsberg. I'm kind of tempted to go with The Cook because it's told in little chapters that I think are quite uh, singular, maybe. I'm gonna go to work, I'm gonna get that money, I'm gonna come home. And be an adult and tidy my house. Okay. It's been a day. I have a headache. I also put to my skincare routine and put SPF on. Which is a sure sign that <coughs> I need to stop. I um, finished This Is Pleasure today while I was at work. And I just wanted to give some final thoughts on it. I'm not sure about it. I'm unsure. I'm unsure about the messaging and the approach to the story. I don't know whether in the process of trying to be nuanced, the story has completely erased any kind of idea of I don't know what a vi of victimhood if it if it just came off as being quite excusatory towards the main character because he has this very close friend who's a female who has this real sense of loyalty to him because of how good he's been to her in the past and although she knows that like he is eccentric and quite weird and out there and charming uh, and maybe too much, um, she feels like she, she owes something to him in a sense. It was interesting. I am going to keep thinking about it because it's definitely something that has made me think. I don't know... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if my thought, if my thinking is going to get me to any kind of solid conclusion, but it is what it is. I mean, a book can often just question things and not give, give you solid answers, right? I started reading The Cook by Maylee the Caring Girl. Um, it's really good. I like it so far. I'm about... 40 pages in and it's just a really nice different type of story lots of descriptions of food and cooking which I quite like even though I'm not into cooking I'm into food I'm gonna keep reading for a little bit hi um, I don't really remember what the last thing I recorded I think I recorded something last night but anyway um, Just popping on to say what's up. Uh, I finished another tiny last night. I finished, well, I finished this this morning actually, The Cook by Maylee the Caring Girl. Uh, it was really good. I really liked it. I thought it was 
super cute, super easy read, but enough of a subject to keep me interested. Uh, it's being told by and being narrated by a friend of the self-taught French chef uh, by the name of Moro, who um, just his career as a, as a chef and kind of where it's taken him, the things that he's done, the kind of uh, very fast-paced um, and taxing uh, life of a chef and what it means to work in restaurants and yeah just how almost draining and um, taxing is a really good word taxing is the word that I would use uh, that kind of career can be um yeah it was it was something that I was kind of familiar with I've worked in kitchens before I have friends who are chefs and I know just how demanding and hard that, that lifestyle and that that job can be but also at the, the end of the day how rewarding it can be for those people creatively uh and how, how it's kind of all they really know um all the people that I know that are chefs love to cook for people and love to uh, feed people and that is their way of showing love and yeah I think this book really captured that in this this tiny little story and that that felt like what was at the heart of this character so yeah I would recommend uh, anyone who is interested in kind of food and um, really beautiful descriptions of foods and super quick I think I read it in like wow I read an hour this morning and I read an hour yesterday so two hours I'm sure you could read it quicker if uh for anyone else because I'm very slow but just a nice kind of easy read for the middle of the week but good I enjoyed it so far tiny book challenge is popping off great read so far Assembly was great. This is Pleasure was good. The cook was good. Um, and I'm expecting more great things into the weekend. Uh, yeah. So that's my check-in for the morning. Um, I don't know what else to say. Other than whenever you're watching this, I hope you have a good day. Whatever. Happy Saturday. Um, just checking in, really. Seeing how you all are. Uh, yesterday I had, I took a mental health day from work. Because I felt like I needed it. It's been a funny old week. Where some days it's felt really hard to be an adult and realise that you don't get a break from life. It just keeps going. The responsibility, the guilt, it never stops. So I decided to give myself a break from all that for one day. And it was really good. It's what I needed. I feel better for it today. So much better. What are we doing today? Today we are going to an open home. Well, it's not an open home. It's a viewing. Yeah, Rick and I are going to view this apartment building for sale. It's time to think a little bit seriously about buying a house or something. Probably not a house because we probably most definitely can't afford to buy a home in Auckland. But something, something to own, something to live in. Probably an apartment. Um, but like something interesting. Um, so yeah, that'll be fun. We're going to go meet some friends in the park later for takeaways for dinner um, so that'll be nice to see them books reading that's what we're doing as well um, apparently still reading Bluettes by Maggie Nelson I'm 
really not sure about this. Uh, it's not what I expected at all. First of all, didn't realize it was just listed points. Not points, but thoughts, points, ideas, feelings, memories, like all that kind of stuff all around the color blue. Already bored of the form, the format of it. Uh, I was bored of it probably by like number 11. I think it's, it just feels a bit lazy to me. I mean, I know she is a brilliant writer and people love her, but when I realized that it was just a list, I was like, oh, okay. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I see what we're doing here. The writing is really nice. There are definitely parts where I have underlined, dog-eared, highlighted passages because I think, I feel like I'm feeling what she's saying more than I'm kind of getting it in here. Some of it is just kind of going over my head. And that, I think that was to be expected with Maggie Nelson, like, she is very smart and I am not that smart, so... Yeah, we'll see how we go. It's very easy to read. I just haven't sat down and read it much because I don't know. Um, so I'm hopefully going to finish that today. I reckon it would take me an hour to read the rest of it. I just need to do it. Um, and that's what we're doing today. Those are the plans. I should probably get up. I might read some more of Bullets before I have to get up. And get dressed. Hello, um, I've been back from visiting the apartment for a while now, viewing the apartment, it was really cute, uh, I really liked it, but naturally I immediately imagined what it would be like to live there and my hopes got extremely high and I had to just bring myself back down to reality. The first thing I did when we walked in was look at the big blank wall in the living room and thought that's where the bookshelf will go. Uh, but it was really cute. It's a shame we won't be buying it, but it's fun to look. Yeah, that's me. I'm just sat here avoiding reading bluettes because I'm really not enjoying it, but I'm gonna try and sit here for an hour. I'm gonna set my phone timer for an hour and sit and read. Oh, my camera's gonna die. Okay, bye. Hi. Um, I finished Bluettes by Maggie Nelson. I was determined to finish it today and I did. So it's my fourth tiny for the week. Pretty good. I mean, I'd be quite happy to stop there, but I do really want to finish. I do really want to read Hour of the Star and The Dry Heart. But thoughts on Maggie Nelson. This is my first Maggie Nelson. Um... I'm gonna be honest, I didn't love it. I thought it was good, but I didn't, it's not something that I think is gonna stick with me for a very long time. Even though I thought there were some really nice passages of writing, a lot of like religious kind of references, references to God, and I get really confused when people start saying that God is a colour or God is the void and within us. Things like that, they feel too, um, too abstract to me and I don't really understand what people are trying to say. I did quite enjoy a bit more of the memoir-esque parts of it when she was referring to her, this affair that she's having with this man and also um, her, her really good friend who uh, had an accident and has become very sick and is a, a, has become a quadriplegic and just what that experience is like for her. I would have liked for a bit more of that to kind of come out but instead it felt it felt very fragmented but in a very disjointed way like I, I found it really hard to see where how it flowed that's that's what I think about that glad to have read it um tucked it off the list but 
definitely not be rereading that book. I put up a poll on my Instagram to ask what book I should read next. I think so far this one is winning. I voted on my personal account for this one. I don't know. It's pretty close though. Um, I think when we get back from seeing our friends this up evening, we might I might start this because I don't think we'll be back too late. And I might start one of these, whatever one you guys choose on the L gram. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, okay. Hello. You may be wondering where I am. I'm in our wardrobe at the moment. Because Rupert's playing really loud jazz, Japanese jazz, and also mowing the lawns, so... And I really want to record this now. Um, friend's going to come round, we're going to sit in the garden and read. Honestly, this is what my summer is going to be made of. It's just, like, reading in the garden in the sun. And I'm damn excited. Um, I started Bower of the Star yesterday. I actually only read the introduction and her dedication which I really enjoyed. I think reading the introduction was really helpful because uh, I started reading it and was like, I don't know what the fuck's going on here. Um, so I went back and read the introduction and it kind of helped explain it a little bit more. Um, so it's a story being told from this writer who's, he is the narrator and he is telling the story or preempting the story that he is writing about this woman. Uh, we don't know her name yet, but from the back it says um, Makabe, who is a typist who lives in the slums of Rio de Janeiro. The way that he's writing it is quite interesting. I don't know whether it's good, but I think it's supposed to be quite jarring in the way that it's written he has real moments of quite um beautiful elegant really just absolutely gorgeous pieces of writing um but then <laughs> just talks or brings up the most i don't know seemingly unrelated thing i've ever heard which is quite bizarre so I would say for now, like, I still don't really know what's going on, but uh, it's really interesting, and I don't think without reading the introduction I would have known that that's what was happening. I would have just been so fucking confused, but yeah, really nice writing. Hi. What are you doing in here? I'm recording. Vlogging in the closet. It <laughs> reminds me of yeah. the uh, R. Kelly song. We don't speak about R. Kelly in this house. Um... It's too noisy out there with the, the, the thing and the Sorry. music. It's okay. I'll stop. It's like I'm recording a podcast. Yeah, so far I am enjoying it, but I'm not really sure what is going on. It's a little bit different to Maggie Nelson because obviously that music is... It's as if he's turned it up louder. Okay, I'm going to finish now. Um, Yeah, unlike Maggie Nelson, I didn't really know what was going on but didn't enjoy it so at least I've got one of the two here I kind of don't really know what's going on I could pick up pieces of it but I am enjoying it uh yeah that's what I'm gonna leave you on I have just got news that Jessica is extending the tiny book challenge which is great because I still have two books that I want to read I uh, I haven't really done much this weekend, which has been really nice, but I'm feeling like I'm going to get the Sunday scaries later on, so just trying to do lots of nice things for myself um, to avoid that. Kia ora. My hair is so frizzy today. I'm just packing a bag for work and thought I would check in with you. Um, it is Monday. I finished reading Hour of the Star, The Hour of the Star, by Clarice Lyspector. This little fluorescent guy here. 
Um, I really enjoyed it. It was a weird, bizarre, strange little book that I don't know if I got 100%, but I, I enjoyed it. I thought the way that it was narrated could have come across as like quite pretentious but I thought it worked in a humorous way the narrator is writing the story and he is kind of explaining it or talking us through it and like trying to write quite quite poetic parts and just maybe coming across as a bit of an asshole um and he's very harsh towards his main character, who he's created. It's a fictional character, but he really brings her to life. And the way that he speaks about her and the way that he humanizes her. Um, which I found quite inter interesting. That, uh, that playing with storytelling and what it means to narrate... Yeah, it was really, it was really, it was really weird, but I liked it. I, um, I've never read anything like that before, so pretty good, pretty good. Uh, going to go to work. I got up and exercised this morning, so I'm feeling quite tired because of it, but I haven't even started my day yet, so I can't be thinking like that. Uh, yeah, today is the final day for the Tiny Book Challenge. Jessica has extended it. So I'm going to try and fit one more book in. I said it was going to be this, The Dry Heart, but I think I want to read The Promise. I uh, hope you all have a good day, and I will check in with you later. Okay, bye. Just checking in. Um, I got some book mail at work today. I had made an order to Thrift Books ages ago, like months ago. And about half the order arrived and then I reported the other half missing. And so they gave me a refund. And then two of the books turned up. And then... Now we're another four weeks later and the rest of it's turned up. So, I don't know. I don't know what you're supposed to do in that situation. But I guess you just keep the books and don't say anything. That's what I'm going to do. Um, the first one is Little Labours by Rivka Gulshan. Uh, this is a cute little New Directions um, hardcover, like cloth bound. I mean, it does have a watermark ring stain on the front but other than that it's in really good condition um, this is a collection of essays about babies and literature and I think there is like a passage or like a part in here that um, lists like writers famous writers yeah, notes on some 20th century writers, and it's like well, female writers um, and male writers actually who've had children or not had children, and then comparatively, um, like when their writing careers kind of began. Uh, and that, I saw someone post that and I can't remember who it was but that was enough to make me want to pick this up so I'm super stoked to find a used copy of that on thrift books. Uh, the next one that I picked up was Tonight I Am Someone Else by Chelsea Hodson, a collection of essays that I have heard are really fantastic. I've heard they're really good so yep pick that up. Next one I picked up was A Single Man by Christopher Isherwood and I love this kind of like twile, uh, old school twile kind of illustrated cover. 
Uh, I have seen the movie of this and really loved it. So I uh, have always been kind of keen to read the story, the book that it's based on. And yeah, ever since I've seen this cover, I cannot stop thinking about it. And the last one was uh, The Story of My Teeth by Valeria Luiselli. Louis Sally, I don't know. This is a translated fiction. It's a novel about a man who is traveling the world and he's like a collector of oddities, like a little things. And one of his most precious possessions are a set of teeth that belong to different sets of teeth that belong to famous people. So Plato, Petrarch, I don't know who that is, Chesterton and Virginia Woolf. Um, it says, written in collaboration with the workers at a juice factory, the story of my teeth is an elegant, witty, exhilarating romp through the industrial suburbs of Mexico City. And Lewis Alley's own literary influences and a meditation on, as Highway says, the variable value of art. Um, so yeah, that sounded like a cool kind of concept as a book. That was a surprise book that I got out of work today and really stoked if those books turned up in Don't Tell Thrift Books. I started reading The Promise on my walk to work and at lunchtime and then on my walk home and I'm really enjoying it. It is... Um, the story of a woman who has fallen overboard of a ship and she is kind of just floating in the ocean waiting to be rescued. And as this is happening, she is remembering people in her life. She's trying to physically remember these people as a way to kind of survive. So she's, she's memorizing the way that they look, like the features about them, but then that kind of goes into uh, stories that are attached to certain people and then that links onto other people that she's remembering. But I am really enjoying this. I am probably gonna get my own copy because I can already tell that I want to write all over this one. So yeah. I might wrap this vlog up here because I don't think I'm going to finish this today. I'm going to try, but I don't think I will. We've had a good week of reading. Lots of tinies we consumed this week. They were all pretty delicious in their own special ways. Um, but yeah, I felt like I read some really great stuff this week. I would say it was a very successful tiny book challenge for me. And I'm probably just going to keep reading Tiny's for the rest of the week because there's a few that I didn't get to that I want to. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to do that and probably not record a vlog this week. I'm just going to stop here and just have a bit of a week off and a weekend off. I will see you in my next video or see you in my next vlog or whatever you choose to watch again. You'll see me.